and then um, let me I'm email sorry. them to you. Sorry, Amber. No, I'm just, again, going back and forth from in office to here, I'm a little. No, I know. Um, I, I leave things on my office computer. I'm finally starting to sync things, but. This has been a really long day. I know. Can it's you meet just, in person? It's just been a, it's been a long year, guys. I, everyone I know is like cooked, baked. Like we're well, done. the problem is I've just been in like I've been on like meetings since like eight or nine. I just can't. Yeah, <laughs> and half of the time I've been multitasking. Like as I'm taking notes for one meeting, somebody's emailing me mm -hmm. urgent things that they need right away. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, Tracy, if you if you participate in enough meetings, you can avoid work altogether. <laughs> well, actually, that, so one thing I've plan. been doing, I've been yeah. we are we lost something in our office, and so there's trainings that we do a lot for like mass DOT and other training. I went to one today on complete streets and public engagement. Yay! Uh -huh. um, but there were also some on work zone training, but some of them are actually literally like the same training over and over, and there's like a live presenter who gets no feedback from the audience and just talks <laughs> anyway it's crazy okay i found it, I found it. okay here we go um pursuing well, hang on hang on are we recording we need to record yeah she are started already. we started already <clears throat> pursuant to governor baker's march 12 2020 order suspending certain provision provisions of the open meeting law general law chapter 330a section 18 this meeting of the tac is being conducted via remote participation. Uh, the meet, this meeting is being recorded to the web and will be shown, could be shown on Amherst Media Broadcast as uh, the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, and we're recording to the cloud, is that correct, Amber? Um, okay, so the TIC is called to order and I should, um, remind people who are dialing in are there anyone i can't i'm not sure no okay so then i go oh, attendees yeah okay great so this meeting is called to order and um yeah so i discussed with aaron earlier to today he's still not feeling really great and up to par he feels a little better in the mornings but i think the evenings aren't so great for him um and so he requested that I um, I do this, and we on Monday he realized he just couldn't do it. So, um, so I put an agenda together, very ad hoc, because it needed to get done. And so, um, uh, so uh, there are a few things that had been called to my attention. The first, um, thank you, um, Darcy, for um, uh, coming. Everyone got the. Um, the notice from the they the TSO sent us um, the um, disabilities access advisory committees very um, thoughtful and complete um, memo that about the um, Pomeroy intersection and um, they the TSO was wondering if we had any. Um, if we wanted to add or, you know, just take a look at this letter and see if there was anything that we wanted to, any other input we wanted to give them. So um, I got, um, I, I should tell you that I did talk with Aaron about this earlier and um, today, and he was very um, keen on also, um, um, just reading through this because, you know, they're, they're a very thoughtful committee too. And certainly this is some, these are things that we are very acutely aware of. And one thing that he suggested, which I thought was um, perhaps not really indicated in our initial letter was the idea that um, the crosswalks in a um, roundabout can be set back where um, further from the intersection, so we don't have to, they, 
that was something he was just discussing with me. So I'm bringing that to you. Um, and perhaps something we want to discuss or reiterate um, versus um, signalized crossings where the inner, the, where the, um, the pedestrian crosswalks are, you know, right next to the, where people are making decisions about un, out, uh, traffic that's coming through. So, um, but I, I'm, you know, up for discussion. And if we want to comment at all on this, um, we can either, yep, um, um, make um, some suggestions or clarifications, I think, and we could do that now, or we could put it on the agenda for a later meeting, I think, too, next meeting. Um, it's up to us. Floor is open. Tracy, you have the first comment. Um, a couple of things is one, I realized in reading through the letter, um, the memo that we sent again yes. um, to TSO that there were, there's at least like one major, well, it, it seems pretty major in my mind that we left out. And I guess if we do have comments, if we did want to amend that, as well as any additional comments, I might suggest that we just submit an amended version of our memo to sure. TSO, because I'm afraid if we have like multiple versions and like, for example, the council will be reviewing, I know Darcy at TSO meeting, she had talked about contacting all the council members and they had talked about sharing the you know wealth of information that they've been receiving about roundabouts and feedback and so on um, with the council. So I think it would be nice for it to be all in one document and not spread across different documents and so on. So the one thing that got left out, and I know we talked about it um, at the, our meeting, so I apologize that it didn't make it into the final draft, was just to emphasize that um, if, you, if there is going to be an enhanced signalized intersection, there should be no right turns on red. Oh. And somehow that is not in there, and I would really like to emphasize that it needs to be in there for, for pedestrian safety. safety. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is that we did put, um, we did talk about for roundabouts about setting back the crosswalks from we the did. intersection to minimize pedestrian conflicts. I don't, I don't think you know we drew a direct comparison with the like the standard signalized intersection, but I think most people understand that those crosswalks are right at the intersection. And there was actually some discussion at the TSO meeting um, where Guilford, I mean, maybe Guilford can recap it too, but he was talking about the number of car lengths they try to set back the um, crosswalks at roundabouts. I think like one and a half car lengths or something. At one least, car length, oh, somebody least. had suggested one and a half and you suggested one. And oh, you, we've, um, we've been doing we've been doing one. We could move back a little bit more if we want to. Okay. I mean, I, th I think from a navigational standpoint, it can be confusing if it gets moved back too far because then people don't know where to look for it, particularly you know, if you're visually impaired or blind or something. So it's good to keep it, but it, to, but it is good to do it before, like there's all the merging lanes and so on. Yeah. So, and the other thing I really you like with worry the about cross, pedestrians and then you worry about oncoming traffic. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I really like about the roundabout crosswalks, like the ones that we have on at the North end of campus and um, Triangle Street is that they do have like the different um, pavement material for the crosswalks to delineate them that way. So one thing that um, Myra Ross has mentioned to me is that it's actually really difficult to navigate some of the downtown intersections that have the, like all pedestrians go at the same time because there's no differentiation in the pavement. And so if you have the traffic go in one direction first and the traffic in the other direction, they can navigate. If you're blind, you can navigate off of the traffic because you know where to go. But if you have like a all pedestrians go at the same time and no traffic, you don't, unless you have that pavement differentiation, there's, it's really difficult to navigate. From, Great. For her, from her perspective, it's very difficult, so. That makes sense to me, yeah. Um, Bruce. Oh, yes, I was gonna make the same point as Tracy that uh, I, I knew we had talked about placing the uh, crossings a little bit farther away from the roundabout. And I had mentioned that it's an example, uh, not only the one at the north end of the university campus, but also Look Park. It's, right. I use that one frequently as a biker, and I, I, I bike in the pedestrian lane rather than on the road. And I've always felt very safe there. Cars seem to have lots of time to see me. I've never felt any sense of danger there when I've crossed. 
Uh-huh. Great. Um, I have, oh, sorry, Kim. Go for it, Mark. No, no. Please. Um, I sent out a two links just now, yet more Google, you know, science-ing. Um, I was wondering if, Tracy, you might be able to uh, look in UMass for the paper I sent. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, because it's a TRB thing, but they, you know, say you can find it somewhere. So. Is it actually like a TRB presentation? It isn't a TRB. Is no, a... no, no. Yeah, oh. it was my. Well, no. So it used to be TRB is a huge um, transportation meeting every year in DC. It has like ten to fifteen thousand participants, and they used to publish all the proceedings. But now they only, they don't publish it unless it actually ends up in the Journal of Record, which doesn't happen with about with about 80% of the presentations, that's why I'm asking. But um, mm -hmm. um, right. I saw that you sent that link and I didn't know what it was and I didn't open it yet, but I can look for that paper. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Because uh, it, yeah. it, it, it's, um, so I just, I thought, well, why don't I look at the institute? Given that the other links I sent earlier today um, that were from uh, Washington State DOT uh -huh. right. that uh, mm -hmm. referenced the in Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, I just thought, well, look at what they got first on their web page on their front page they have a specific section for roundabouts and they have a specific call out for uh pedestrian safety and roundabouts and just to the points made in the uh memo i think need some clarification and I think that say this or some of the other things that I've sent out would be very useful to to um, clarify what was put in that uh, memo so yeah I'm done now sorry thank you sorry um, so the question is for, I pose to you is like, and maybe I should ask Darcy. Darcy, what would you like for us to do exactly? Um, uh, I had heard from, um, from Tracy that you might want to amend your report. Okay. And it's, it's fine if you want to do that. Um, the, the town manager today asked to extend our decision making to the May 6th meeting. We thought we were gonna make our, our recommendation at the next meeting on April 22nd, but okay. um, it looks like the town manager wants more time to answer the remaining questions that we put out and um, also to get uh, all the outreach to businesses and abutters finalized. They're gonna have the pop-up meeting on the 17th and I think they'll be able to report um, at least informally about the results of that meeting on the 22nd, but the town manager wanted more time to make sure that we got everything back from the businesses and the abutters. Um, so it looks like we're gonna do that, um, extend it to the 6th. Um, I'm sorry, extend it to which date? I'm to, sorry. To May 6th. May 6th, okay, okay back to the Thank town you. council at the town council's may 17th meeting okay. and lynn the council president was fine with that um it make takes up an awful lot of <laughs> meeting time by extending it enough another meeting but i guess uh, we're just gonna talk about it some more yeah well, that's what i was gonna ask like are you gonna have a lengthy discussion. I think it was your whole meeting almost, right? The last TSO meeting last week. And yeah, if you thought yeah. that it was still going to be the predominant topic at your next week meeting, the 22nd. Uh, it looks like it's going to be because we don't have anything else on the agenda. And we, we put off what we were going to have on the agenda to the following meeting. And now uh, uh, what we might do is, interestingly, we're, we all love the tech memo and like the way it is set out. And so thank you for that. Um, and, you know, we are, you know, we may be talking about like, what is the form of the motion that we're eventually going to be 
using for our recommendation. And um, from what I can tell from the other members, they like the format of the of the TAC recommendations um, and all the all the sub recommendations and so on. So I'm I'm guessing that we're going to be talking about that at our meeting on the 22nd too. So thank you. So, so potentially then um, um, updating our, our letter maybe in help help you mm -hmm. more, especially in response to the, the recent um, um, disability committee um, memo. So perhaps that's something I, I would suggest that we kind of work on it like we did the last time, um, kind of make some updates, edits, Tracy, does this sound good to you? And yeah, I mean, I guess so then, I wanted to and add, then go ahead. send it around and then submit it over to them. Or we alternatively, we could put it on the agenda for the, the, the letter on the agenda for the next meeting because it sounds like they will have enough time. Yeah, to I mean, I that. think, I mean, I, I my tendency would be, I, I didn't hear too many changes that we want to make. Um, like I do want to add the right turn on red piece and we can just emphasize it the setting the crossbox back which i think we already it's already in there but we can yeah, make it emphasize it and i'm looking at marcus's paper right now but the um i mean my tendency would just be to submit what we have i mean i do think that it is possible that there will be like additional feedback from the community and from other committees and so on but it seems i wouldn't I wouldn't expect that we'd want to change very much in our memo. And I think as the council starts, the whole council starts to review it, I guess I'd like to, them to just see what. Well, one thing I would suggest potentially for the memo is that we kind of make the recommendation after a lot of the, the points. We might want to just kind of rejig how we set it out. So we, we, we come out with the recommendation and the points are supporting that recommendation rather than here's a whole bunch of points and then buried deep in there is the recommendation just so we can kind of bring it out yeah. quickly, because I think that's something that will probably end up you know if uh, the town council is going to use that that would probably be the way that they would use it anyway. So. Well I guess so my suggestion with that then would be that we take another vote now like that everybody's here because we mm -hmm. took a vote with only with some members missing yeah. um the other oh. the other thing was I mean I I felt like you know, our role is to be advisory and not to tell the council what to do. And so I, that was one reason when I was drafting, when I did my draft of the memo that I structured it to put our vote at the end. And we just said, if you choose option A, like, please consider the following. And these are our recommendations. And if you choose option B, please consider the following. These are our recommendations. And by the way, we did vote. But we want you to, in either case, whatever you do, like, mm -hmm. we want you to focus on these bigger pictures of the safety. And that's why I structured it the way I did, just because yeah. uh, we're just advisory. We're not like ordering the council to do it. No, anything. yeah. I so. Yeah. So I, yeah, seems like, I mean, this is since Tracy's, perhaps since Tracy's writing the memo, she's done all the work. We'll, we'll let her have that. And, um, and, and, and at, at some level, I also agree with you, Tracy. It, it seems like more subtle and like more advisory to kind of just put that at the end. Um, so great. Okay, so then we will just amend it and um, minor amends and then send. So you have it for your next meeting, Darcy, and you can do with it as you will. Great. Thank you. One um, thing, mm -hmm. sorry, can we just before we move on one, I mean, can we take that a second vote again, but then um, also, so one thing that the Disability Access Advisory Committee brought up in their memo mm -hmm. is the idea of having review later in the project. And I think, I mean, I, so when we took the initial vote, um, you know, some people voted for it and I abstained. And the reason I abstained is because I think you know, in terms of how safe an intersection is or like so much of it matters on the details of like how it's implemented and how the details are designed. And it's much more than is it a signalized intersection or is it a roundabout, right? Because you can have issues with either of those and either of those can be really well designed. And so it's a little, I mean, it's a little hard. And I, this has come up at some of the meetings. It's a little hard to decide 
how much somebody likes one project or the other when we there's so many pieces we don't know right until you actually see the 25 percent design or 50 percent design and so on um but so i mean i don't know if that would be something that we'd want to incorporate in our i mean we did say again because we're an advisory committee i didn't want to say you have to send it back to us for more advice but we could, we could say we could say we hope that we can be part of the you know process as mm -hmm. the um, yeah i think design is more advanced because those details really matter so much so yeah i think we can also put in that we hope that they focus on these elements right so that we don't necessarily have to have our fingers in the pie all the way through if we set out our expectations um or shut out the way that we expect that we would suggest that the town has expectations for you know these elements. We don't necessarily need to have our fingers in the pie all the time, but uh, because these continual you know go backs to people and ch design changes are just going to increase the cost of the project. So we have to balance that ability to change direction at any point with the you know the also the desire that we heard at many of these town meetings to keep the costs down to stay within the budget that we have and some uh, they aren't exactly mutually exclusive so um, well, well and just ahead. one other point on that i would just i mean i would say and particularly as i've been attending these classes about public engagement and public involvement in transportation planning and decision making processes that you know public engagement is not just like one point in time right i think that's what the um, disability access advisory committee was trying to say too that you know you it, it is appropriate to involve you know advisory committees or um, the public at different stages as well as even after the project is completed um, to see if it's working as people expected or if it needs any retrofitting or if there's any issues and so on so um, like with that in mind, I think we could add a little bit of language on that, but I mean, that, those are best practices if that's the model that Amherst wants to follow. So we could add, sorry, Bernie, so we could potentially, and I'll, I'll get to you, we could potentially add that into our memo that those are the best practices and that we would be happy to advise um, once the, you know, 50%, whatever, whatever the different right. of the projects are, and that's it, Bernie. No, that's pretty much what I was going to say, and I just point out that the committee is available um, to, uh, to 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 offer uh, uh, guidance or suggestions at any point in the design process, and yep. um, uh, let them know. And you know, the, and I think uh, you know the observation that um, public involvement, public engagement in a process like this is is ongoing is a good one, um, including a hot wash at the end. And how did everything go? How did everything work? Does it, does it is doing what we said it was going to do. Good. Okay. So um, I have two questions. One is a bit of a technical question. So um, the Disability Access Advisory Committee said that they wanted to review the project at the 50% design. And I know for the like the mass DOT processes that I'm most familiar with, it's usually like the 25% design, and then sometimes they come back later. So. I don't know if Guilford or what, what are the DPW's practices about in terms of sharing and at what point is the design shared with the public? DPW does not subscribe to anything you guys just talked about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we do not share with anybody. You decide to do it, we plan it, we do it, it's done. But I, but I thought that's what we've done in the past. I mean, I thought, isn't that? I, yes. I, We'll, 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 bring it, we'll bring it back a little bit, um, probably at 70, closer to 75 than 25. So there'll be a 75 and then we'll have most of our, our information together and then we'll be done we're off for 100 after that. Well, so I mean, the why, why do you think that Disability Access Advisory Committee mentioned the 50%? I never heard of that, but. I've never heard it either. But you also have to remember we're up against the deadline for money. So. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. We have to be. We have to spend all the moolah by the 2023. Yeah. And remember, Rome, Rome collapsed. One of the reasons Rome collapsed was what you just talked about. They Too many pots and, in... oh, well, yeah. 
So then Hopefully I just have um, just one other like housekeeping question is if I am revising the memo from the earlier version, if I send it to people as track changes or something, or is that okay yes, with please. people? Okay. Yes, please. I mean, I just wanted to make sure everybody was okay with that. Yeah. But that way you can just see what's actually changed. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Thank, Thank you, Lacey. May I ask yes. a question? Yep. So of course. Um, in the past, um, Guilford has put projects similar to this up on the website. And I wondered if he had planned to do that this time. You have a section on your DPW website about projects. Maybe it's engineering projects or something like that. So that might be a way of having people have an opportunity to see what's being proposed without actually having a meeting. <clears throat> um, Christine, there's also the engagement uh, website that this project's already up on, but there isn't a lot of information for. So maybe I think that informing that website rather than going somewhere else might be the best way to do that, because I think a lot of the comments that are made in that forum need some additional material provided to actually, you know, help people realize what's going on. So I think I agree. Let's put more information out there, but maybe target it at the existing engagement area for people that should be kind of looking to go to there anyway. That, that That's the town manager's goal yeah. with that engage thing is that we start pushing things out in those engage sections and then you can mm -hmm. make comments there. That seems very useful too. <clears throat> as long as it gets done in a kind of a timely way, right? Mm -hmm. One thing, uh, Tracy, as we look through this, uh, do we want to call out any specifics from the memo that we want to um, address in our thing? Are there any in our thing, in our memo, in our memo? Amended. Amend. Yeah. Should we well amend or call out specifically? Maybe make more um, make more aware. But anyway, you know highlight more oh are you are you referring to the disability access advisory committee yes memo the, the, their, their memo community? versus uh, as we are taking the steps to uh, amend our memo to include you know the, the right sure. turn on red part um i'm wondering if there aren't any specifics in the disability access committee's memo that we shouldn't uh, you know key in on on in our memo as well do you have suggestions marcus uh I think that there are certainly some areas in there that need some addressing. Um, things like the, the blanket statements in here, such as safety data is inconclusive. I, I think we need to, um, you know, bring to people's attention that, that, that there is plenty of safety data out there specifically and including, you know, uh, roundabout safety that uh, for pedestrians. Um, I think that uh, the comments in here that say that rearing collisions are more common in roundabouts might, well, is true, except for the fact that overall collisions are far less at roundabouts, but just the way that things have been stated in this makes roundabouts sound like they are um, less safe. Well, I think well, that one, I mean, there's a few points. So I think it is common and Guilford had actually mentioned, I guess, at the TSO meeting that there, he, you know, that there could be more rear end collisions at mm -hmm. roundabouts. But I think a key difference is that the collisions are low speed collisions mm -hmm. and they're not high speed collisions. Well, the, the key difference as well is that overall, the number of collisions at an intersection um, are higher than at roundabouts. <clears throat> I mean, the specific I think type of collisions which is rear end is right. potentially higher and yes the speed at which and the damage well, done by is also is, i mean is lower so yeah i mean and, and in terms of the intersection data which was presented at i mean the intersection crash data that was presented at the tso meeting right that the pomeroy village intersection it has like t-bone crashes mm -hmm. and red light crashes mm -hmm. like and a lot of those are more serious crashes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think we can add data. I mean, I'm a data person. I can make the memo as long as people, <laughs> I mean, we can put in all kinds of facts and links and things. I didn't want to overwhelm people with that, but we can add some of that. 
I was yeah, trying to I keep think, it like a that, reasonable length. Right, right. And, and oh, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry, that's sorry. it. But, yeah, no, I think I mean just like a simple graph <clears throat> that we can source out of you know something goes well, a long you way. Had, you, you had sent a link. Um, I did. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 graph is pretty simple, and mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it might be quite useful. Tracy, you're muted. I'm saying we can even include like links to references, right? Um, I mean, over, yeah. I mean, I've shared references with TSO and so on. I mean, we can include like a whole page of references if we want. <laughs> I don't think we should <laughs> only, one, <laughs> only one page, Tracy. <laughs> so I think, yeah. but I think having like a, you know, a cited, like particularly the, the, the data supporting the idea that safety is is enhanced by the roundabouts is useful. Mm -hmm. right. I, I, but I do like in this memo, you know, calling out specifically the need for um, lighting assistance to crossings, and yeah. we we there are also papers out there on um, visually impaired use of roundabouts that yes. call specifically for uh, you know the uh, types of um, lighting assistant that, right. assistance and things like that. Just adding a bit more data to this. Sure. Rather than kind of the sweeping statements would certainly help. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I do have some of those references. I can add some of them. Okay. I mean, there's yeah, some great guidance. Need... There's some great guidance on accessibility at roundabouts. Mm -hmm. So great. if you need anything, I mean, all I've done is just like Google stuff. So but I can send you what I have. I think uh, I have, to send I have plenty of reference. I have, okay, well, I have at least a couple of pages of references. But yeah, oh, okay. okay. Well, then just throw that in the back. So. <laughs> okay. it, it seems to me that what's called out in the disability access memo for uh, a crosswalk design, all of, just about all of those can be met in mm -hmm. terms of crosswalk design with the roundabouts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially the, the addition of a uh, splitter island. Um, you know, the, there's nothing, there's nothing that, that they've listed that can't be replicated in terms of a, a crosswalk here and a, and a roundabout. So I think their point about the data being inconclusive and they could have said more on that, but I think what they would say um, is that, and I mean, and even I have looked at this in terms of when we're working on complete streets and traffic calming and so on, is that just because there's not any crashes or injury, like doesn't mean that something is safe. It could also mean that people are avoiding the area. And so I think that's what the Disability Access Advisory Committee writes in their memo, right? That the, and they even had people come to their meetings from um, the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind who do travel training. Um, for people where they tell, they say that they tell people to avoid roundabouts, especially the triangle roundabout. So just because there's no crashes there doesn't mean it's safe for them. And so I think that's where they're trying to say that the data is inconclusive, but to Marcus's point, overall, the data does show that um, that roundabouts are safer, right? And Bernie, you had mentioned the insurance companies like roundabouts because you have lower speed crashes, you have less fatalities, less injuries, less property damage. It's all good overall. So yeah, I think I think people's <coughs> concerns when we were listening to the you know the district five meeting was that all sounds like people talking about cars, right? Everyone talks about roundabouts in terms of cars. <coughs> it's implied or it's implicit in those statements that you know pedestrians are going to be safer too because everything's at lower speeds and all this sort of stuff. But when we talk about things, we tend to talk about them in terms of cars, and so people get the the impression or they they take the understanding that you know the focus is on the car it's not about the pedestrian it's not about the pedestrian at all which is you know far from it given where these um traffic management you know systems i'm not sorry going back to work stuff um traffic management uh implementations are positioned in the communities you know not not necessarily in the us but in the rest of the world they're very much part of a an urban environment and a pedestrian urban environment. So it's an implicit part of it, but it's something that we probably need to, you know, pull out more and talk about more than for everyone to kind of understand. 
So in conclusion of this discussion, um, we're going to amend our um, memo slightly and potentially include um, some more safety references, um, potentially addressing some of the issues in the, um, that were brought out from the uh, Disabilities uh, Advisory Committee um, memo. Great. And then you'll send those around to us and we'll forward it on to the TSO. Great. Right. Thanks. So, so we can have the same iterative process that we had last time where I oh. circulate a draft and then I guess what's our time frame? Do we want to distribute it? Do we want it to go to TSO before the TSO is meeting on the 22nd? I think that would be good okay. for them to have. And then they have, you know, they can use it for that meeting right. or for, for the <laughs> final. Okay, so I'll um I'll amend it like by the weekend, and then do right. we want to follow the same procedure where people can then send the edits to Kim, and Kim can sort do the final version. Yeah. And do, do we want to take another vote now that we're all here? Oh yes, that's right. <clears throat> Would we like to? Now that we have. Um. Okay. So. Um, Except for Aaron, we're like still missing Aaron. So. Right. I mean. We could not we like take another, another vote. I mean. I don't yeah, know. I don't, yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that's all. Is anyone else have any other announcements? Oh, so sorry, Kim. I would. Can we take another vote? Because kind of just like three people in favor doesn't sound the best. Um, if we're trying to okay. push the points in our, in our memo, I think it would be good for us to, you know, vote as everybody bar Aaron would be. Just sure. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so who would like to make um, the proposal or whatever you call it? Uh, can I, I'll make the, the TAC recognize the need for upgrade and will support either of the town's choices. That said, we the TAC support the Pomeroy Village intersection being redesigned as a roundabout with pedestrian activated accessible crosswalk lights um, that are set back. Yeah. Uh, by at least one car length. Second. All those in favor? Aye. That's Aye. unanimous. Six to zero. Uh, one, or five two, to zero, three, sorry. Five, five, five. five we only have zero. five, we, we're missing a that person. That is five, five <clears throat> uh, minus Amber. Thank okay. you. Great, so. Um, Fantastic. Uh, sorry, Kim, um, Tracy, do you want me to write down what I said? Because Yes, I, could you probably, please just send that to me? Yeah, because yeah, I oh, updated and, what I did. And so, Marcus, I was just looking for your article. It's from 1994. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so there is, like, newer data. Yeah. And I'm having okay. a little trouble getting it, but anyway, okay. No, 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 if you've got something better, that's awesome. Sure. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. Um, and if there are no other announcements, and I don't believe there are any other public members here, um, I think, and I think we just pretty much finished the recap of the TSO meeting on the 8th. Did you want to say anything else about that meeting other than, um, and Darcy kind of um, hinted at that, that our memo is highly regarded and whatever. Um, I felt like, um, you know, there was a, that for me, it was, it was very nice because, you know, at least our hard work was recognized too at some level, which is great. Um, and um, then we can kind of check, we did that. And then hopefully we will um, look, uh, you know, we'll be asked to look at the 75% thing and we can voice our opinion about that. So I'm glad that, that all of our hard work was recognized and appreciated. Um, I think, is, does anybody want to add anything else? Okay, um, and I'm not sure what number five is for. Recap of major intersection decision considerations. Was that this one? I think that's what that was. So we can move on to the next one, which is, um, and maybe perhaps um, Chris, Chris, you can um, just talk about this a little more. You sent this, uh, there's a new um, proposed PBTA route from Amherst to Worcester, which seems fantastic to me. I couldn't access the article that was um, 
because I, I don't know, I wasn't a member of the newspaper or something. Um, is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, and, and, and Chris, um, we got the, the email came from Brian. I, maybe you can recap, Chris. Chris and can did, you um, did you guys send that email to other people too in a link about the PBTA service? I probably sent it to all the planning department staff and to Guilford oh. and, and you all. Um, yeah, yeah I haven't it? seen it. Did any other TAC members? Oh, I didn't. It? I thought I had forwarded it. I might have missed it. it but. I just saw it on Math Slides website or something. It was just a link. I mean, all because because part of it was a link to a newspaper article that I couldn't access. Um, oh. And the other link was to there's a public meeting and I can send this to everyone. Um, I can forward this to the rest of the members about um, a public meeting on that new route that starts in Amherst and, and ends in Worcester. Um, and it stops, it said it stops in uh, town centers in between as well. It's um, basically following Route 9. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't really have any more information than was okay. in that article, but I thought it was important for you all to see that. And if you wanted to express your support. Um, yeah. And I feel like we would be silly not to do that. One question I did have was whether this is in lieu of the, you know, it, in lieu of proposed um, rail service, which was a little disconcerting to, you know, the idea that we get this bus instead of, and, and not get, I, you know, I think it's more from Springfield to Worcester, but still like that seems to be a much, I don't know, more hotly contest, contested kind of, and obviously much more expensive project, but um, do you have any idea? Yes. I don't. Uh, no, just one thing, the, the, the rail service is uh, not in lieu of this. Okay, great. Yeah, the rail uh, service is uh, being kind of worked, I think, on the federal level. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I just had a question if Chris knew if this bus would ultimately, as one of the stops, link up with the rail station in Worcester, because then there is service to Boston. I believe that was I think that it was thing. going to, yeah. Okay. I, that would be a pretty slow way to get to Boston, but you yeah. could do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so there there was a service a few years ago. It actually went through like a lot of hill towns and so on and it meandered around and then it made its way to Boston. I think it took like a lot of hours if you went all the way to Boston, but it actually was covered. I don't know how that worked. Um, I guess I had one question about jurisdictionally, like how many different transit agencies this involves. Like I know there used to be a route, I'm not sure if it still runs between like um, along route two, like where it would go from the FRTA and then it would go into Worcester County. Is that right? The next county over. Um, and that, so it's just like a little complicated, like in terms of who's running the route and who's funding well, yeah, the route. And there was days. one thing I noticed because, because, you know, because they weren't saying the P, they were saying MBTA, does that make more sense? mass transit oh and and there was another service that was in there so it wasn't necessarily the i don't think it was the pvta and there was somebody well there's else. like mart mart is one monachusett area regional transit there's a you know a number of regional transit mm -hmm. agencies but there wasn't it was another service that I, ha I was not familiar with that seemed to also be providing part of this rep I, I don't, I'm not sure, but um, perhaps we should get some more information about that and then um, potentially send a letter. So um, we'll, I'll, I'll do that, but you know, we're uh, obviously our, our committee is, is excited for any more public um, transportation that links us, our town to um, other towns east of us. So, um, and, so I, and it's great to hear that there might be another you know, a bus line, which is well, that actually brings me to the question about I know that we've been hoping for somebody from the PVTA um, or Doug Slaughter, who's on the PVTA board, to come to one of our meetings and give oh, yeah. updates. And in terms of how the PVTA is doing financially, particularly with COVID and the drop in ridership, and if it's threatening any of the routes or anything, I'd, I'd love to get an update on that. So, 
It was really helpful when he came last time. Yeah, so. I agree. Yep. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just taking notes on that. Um, and um, I think that, so, so I guess we'll table this until we get more information, but thank you, Chris, for bringing that to our attention. Um, and um, I think one thing before we get into the, um, the uh, pedestrian and bike plan, which was, I was hoping we could make a big push on that tonight. One thing that I, in reviewing our notes from the um, last meeting, we had talked about, um, and, and it is on this meeting's list, the prioritization plan idea of um, uh, static uh, the projects being put, po the project list being put on the website. And I'm wondering if we've um, updated, if, if we've, we, meaning Guilford, <laughs> um, has made any progress on that because I haven't. Um, but I mean, we kind of tabled that discussion at the end of last meeting because we were, we were getting over time. And I'm just curious if, um, if you have any updates on that because, because we also, I think we weren't sure which list to put up and whether that was appropriate. So I'd love to hear a little more on what you think of the matter, Guilford. I know I didn't prep you on this, so. No. Um, I, I pretty much wasn't going to post my list, um, but Aaron wanted to realign the list that you guys have all your stuff on, all the, all the um, the bigger list you have, which has what people submitted requests for. He kind of oh, wanted okay. to have. Yeah. Wanted to have that re kind of configured and use that list. But see, it seems like. So that isn't that the list that like any request that comes in is on that list. Is that the list? But That's it seems cool. like from a public perspective, as well as like, I know you're going to hire the consultant to work on the complete streets plan that in terms of like knowing what the priority projects are for funding. I mean, the list of like everything that everybody's ever wanted in terms of bike and pet and transportation improvements like not all of those are going to happen like in for a pretty long time frame so the priority list seems way more important i know that that's and people have emailed me too just asking about different projects so if there is something that we can share run it by the tac i mean run it by the tso and share so but my my list is a working list and it changes and i move things oh, around and right so it's not it's not a priority list which is really what i was hoping is when we get through with the prioritization, there yeah. is a list, but you can take the list of your submittals and, and do, do, I mean, that would be fine with me, but my list has stuff not on your list because they're bigger projects that came from different places. Um, and then they get dropped and moved and stuff because yeah. I'm told to do that. Yeah. That's a work. That's my working list. Um, but isn't there, don't we have a list that has like the top like five or 10 projects that are being pursued for funding? No type list. I thought we did. So no. I want to give when I this, first joined. I, I'd like to talk okay. about the Pomeroy Lane intersection as a, an example of this. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunistic um, thing. You have something in your mind. You know that work needs to be done in some part of town. Um, a grant opportunity comes along and you jump on it. And it's not necessarily something that was on the top of the tax list or the top of Guilford's list or the top of the town council's list. It's just things come together at a certain time. It's yeah. serendipity, is that what they call it? Yep. And you just say, okay, let's go for it. And you get the money and you do the project. And so having a list with priorities is a good idea, but it's not necessarily something that you're gonna really stick with or follow, you know. But, so, but when the town is preparing the complete streets plan, like my understanding was there was gonna be a list of say like 20 to 30 projects on that and that are gonna have like cost estimates built out. Um, and that I know like even I had talked with uh, Jeff McCullough at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and he was talking about some towns that have submitted complete streets plans that have say up to like 70, 50 or 75 projects on them. And, um, and that as long as it's on the list then it's eligible for funding. So we don't have to have a super short list, but. Well, you're mixing, we're mixing things up here. The priority, the complete street priority list is that. 
And if the town makes one, that would be public information. And I hate to say Jeff's wrong, but just because it's on the list doesn't mean it's, it doesn't, just because it's on the list means it's eligible for funding. And just because it's not on the list doesn't mean it's eligible for funding. There's so much funding out there. Something can be done because, because someone has money and they decide they want to build a sidewalk and they want to name it the Arthur B. Swift sidewalk or something. Um, so, I, I mean, the prior, if we go through the uh, complete street program, there'll be a product that will give you a, that complete street prioritization list. And that'll be the official list. Um, but I'll still have a working list and I'll have a working document that I used as my stuff. Um, so we're getting there, but we're not there is what I guess I'm trying to say. So unless you want to take, um, unless you want to take the, the submittals to you and use that for a, a base list to start with. So I guess I guess I'm 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 just not very savvy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reinterpret what just happened so I can really make sure that I understand um, the point that you're making. Which um, so I mean. We all know that there are lots of projects that we have in town and we've, we kind of have our favorites. Um, and um, obviously all of them can't get funded and um, we're not really in a position to actually prioritize them because we don't have an actual uh, prioritization scheme quite yet. And, and, Gilf and, and, and um, yet we, and, and we don't necessarily and this is where I want clarification because I, again, I'm just being, I, I just don't understand. Um, we don't necessarily want to prioritize things at the moment either. And maybe you Guilford don't want to publish your list because then it might lock you into a certain, you know, someone could make an argument that wait, you put that number one yet we're doing number six. Um, and that might be an, an issue for you, us as a, I don't know, as a body, as a body that needs to represent the people. I, I'm not quite sure. But is that the point that we do kind of have a prior, but we don't want to necessarily like publish that because then it might hold us to hold us accountable somehow. And that's okay. I totally get that because also money is shifting around, right? And like you, like you said, you said, I mean. So I'm just trying to clarify. That's one way to say it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. I mean, so I do and have a question. It, it, I mean, it has been our, this has been our goal is to, I mean, and ever since I've been on this committee, this is something that Guilford has, you know, this, he's made it inherently clear that that's our job. Like that was our number one job is to help help him prioritize um, these things because he doesn't want to have to justify his, pro his favorite projects or whatever. And that's pretty much been what he, he's been telling us all along. So um, yes, does anyone else have a comment on that? I mean, we can get our head with our work and then we can, we can make the actual prioritization list that we can actually put on our website. So, I mean, we have had a few times, right, conversations about, I always think of them as like two lists, maybe that's not the right way to think about it, but there was a list of of sort of like more, like larger scale projects. Um, and I remember actually we went through the longer list, maybe the list that Aaron's talking about, and we, we identified sort of clusters of ideas, like for example, along 116 and like, like other, areas that we knew that there were going to be like a number of places that the TAC was hoping to have improvements. Um, but I do feel like we did have a one list and I, I totally agree. I mean, I don't think we should have projects ranked per se, but just a list of like, these are the main, I mean, and maybe, you know, once we get through the map and, and also yeah. Eve and I are working on the plan, I mean, the prioritization scheme that we could still at least put forth a list of like these are the top you know 10 15 projects that the TAC is like the most interested interested and concerned in yeah and then they're not being shown in like a particular order where one is higher than the other and so on but just to identify that those are the projects that have come up over and over yep 
And that seems fair. Um, Eve, yes. So two things. One, are we then saying that we really can't have any list publicly available on the web until we have a complete streets plan completed and until we have our prioritization plan completed? No. No, what I'm saying is leave in about 10 minutes. So if we want to talk a little a bit about the subcommittee, we might want to do it. But anyway. No, what I'm saying is you can't have my list to be your priority list to go on yeah, the town web page. It. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that clarification. Um, Eve? and what we, yeah. Um, Eve, did you say that you had some subcommittee yeah. updates? I don't really have much to say because I've been completely buried, but um, Tracy helped helped us find a, um, a graduate student in transportation engineering who's going to be working with us. And uh, she and I are going to meet and try to hammer out some of the numbers and some of those columns on the, um, the what's it called, the level of service, level of yep. traffic stress, um, you know, and then that, anyway, so that's the next step. Awesome. Thank you. Well, and I just have a quick like comment on that. And, um, but I know that I, I think I'd sent around a link to some people and other um, cyclists. I know that there was this uh, survey that was distributed that like visually showed like which uh, bike facilities are preferable for cyclists and things like that. And I actually, I was listening to an interesting presentation the other day, just about um, when you have uh, bike lanes that have like barriers compared to ones that don't in terms of how safe people feel. So I, I, I'd be happy to, it's some um, research that's going on at Berkeley from somebody who got their PhD at U, UMass. And uh, so what they're doing is visually just trying to have people judge like what seems the safest to them or what do they worry the most about and things. And I'd be happy to share it with the TAC, but. That sounds super helpful for me and Emily actually. Um, yeah. I think so I, great. did I send it to you already? I thought I did. You might have. If so, it might've hit me when I was very. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll circulate him. that to the TAC again. Great. And cool. if everybody wants to, but that's the sort of stuff that the um, subcommittee is looking at, right? In terms of like level of service for like all the different levels of cyclists and what do people feel the most comfortable with <clears throat> and safest with. Um, so thank you for that discussion. And I would love to get to, um, we still have a half hour left. We can get to our bike ped plan, which I do not have access to from this computer. And I'm hoping maybe Guilford, do you have? Uh, I was wondering, let me go see if I can get it real quick. I'm sorry. I've got, I've got the map up. I could email the people, um, but I've got it up on my computer. Um, well, we all need to share it. Right. Um, so I can it. share it, except that I have to go. You can, uh, okay. Yeah. Eve, you want? You can email it right now, you and I'll get it. Okay, I'll, so why don't I pull it up right now and then I'll email it too, is that good? That's fine. Yeah, actually. Well, and Amber I, had sent them around, right? She sent it around a couple of times. Yeah. Is this okay? Yes, but is that from you because? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll grab it when she sends it over. I'm sorry, now you're gonna see my email. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really need to see my email. Okay, but now you can see the map, right? Yeah, and and all your drawings on it, which is which actually was great too. No, no. I keep messing it up. Oh, gosh, sorry. I'm gonna have to unshare until I send this email. I can't. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it's, it's really. I do have one quest, random question for Guilford. On Northeast Street, that road that goes is shown as a road now on the map that goes into the woods. Who? Who owns that? Road that off the it goes off to like Adams Brook. South of the big house. Oh, that's that's the access to the old rifle range. It's owned by UMass. Okay. Because, oh, sorry. I'm just thinking the, the state stocks Adams Brook, but there's nowhere to get to it apart from that. But then it's all like um, shown that it's so. Uh, you know, keep off, keep off, keep off. So, I'm curious who owned it. I, uh, yeah, I think it's UMass. If I think it's what you're saying. I didn't realize there was a rifle range down there. It's interesting. Used to be. It's not one anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh yeah. 
The only rifle range in town is at the south end of town now. Right, uh, but yeah, up at the notch or on the way there. Okay. So can I make one comment about the map? I just wanted, I, I don't, I wanted to make sure you guys are remembering that we're talking about two different levels of bicyclists as well as pedestrians. And we want to mark um, which, if, if we have all three of those, two of those, you know, et cetera. But I thought this map, I thought this map was just um, the, the, for all three, the purple for everybody, right? Isn't that what we were, we had to Well, the way they, the way these guys did it is they only looked at pedestri pedestrians and bicyclists. They grouped all bicyclists together. And in our discussions, we've really emphasized that um, the stronger bicyclists and the less experienced bicyclists may actually need different infrastructure. Right. Can you just go to the bottom where the um, le legend of this map is? Right. Okay. So remember, and so this is for everybody. Oh, yeah. So default assumption is where we've put peds. We also want small and inexperienced cyclists. Yeah. 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 And, and on this map so far, the blue is the walking. Um, a blue is, sorry, blue is the biking. Um, and the red or pink is walking and then purple is both. Pink. You remembered better than me, Kim. <laughs> when we'd Kim gone down to um, Main Street, like we'd gotten, like we had so done I, High I was Street. You did something in the meeting I missed. That yeah. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know we that. had done all those neighborhoods like near the middle school and the high school. Right. Yeah. So who have the notes for those? Right, we were in the middle of, um, I feel like we were um, on the, uh, the red circle all the way to the left, right? That's yeah. where we had kind yeah, of- who, That's a good question. Eve, who does have the markup for that meeting? Um, uh, 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 Amber. But Eve is gonna leave, right? So we need to have someone else that can do this. I got it. Okay, thank you. So then Guilford, you have the notes from the second meeting, right? Where we went from North Amherst to the to Main Street. I mean, I think I think Amber has those. Okay. Yes, they were all. Marcus, you're talking about this road right here, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the rifle range road, it's UMass uh, property. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, huh. And we concurred um, with the purple being the um, center. Can we go in a little bit, Guilford? <clears throat> um, yeah, I think we ended up just, we had gone, you're right, we had gone through the um, Wildwood and the middle school region. We were more in the downtown region. Um, Yes. Does everyone agree with me on that? Anyone disagree? I think we should go. Um, can you just no, bring? We yep. were starting to go through UMass. I remember, like we stopped because we were talking about like Commonwealth and some of the this mid, area. Okay, mid yeah. UMass streets. Yes, we did definitely do the middle school, that area over there. So, we did those. Yes, right. we did but then that. I know that we over. got to UMass and we we're talking about like the. Mm -hmm. The roads yeah. that go past Southwest and like all that. Oh, am, uh, not Amity. Yeah. That's no, it's fearing, fearing. Okay. Um, and so maybe you could bring that in a little more, Guilford, for us, the um, North Pleasant and Mass Ave, like, and um, fearing area. And of course, the new roundabout isn't on there. And they increased all, you know, that whole um, street, which is, uh, what is it? North, whatever University Drive. That's, I mean, at least that part through UMass is much better now. Um, and so, are we in agreement? Okay, so the blue and um, on these pieces through UMass, like Mass Ave and um, Fearing and Sunset and Lincoln, um, those are blue, which is, oh, biking, which is interesting um, because 
there are no bike lanes on say Lincoln and Sunset for sure. Or Mass Ave. I don't think there's bike lanes on Mass Ave. No, and there, but there shouldn't be. Biking no, is course. supposed to be on those, you know, the sidewalks there. I don't think there should be uh, only two lanes of traffic. I mean, the, the sidewalks are really wide on either side right. of that. And, and there's, you know, there's the, you, there's lots of access for bikes through campus anyway. But I, I guess, wouldn't we still call those, like, shouldn't they still be purple yeah. as part of, yeah. like, the bike they, route? They are. Yeah, I think all of those should be purple. I mean, those but are... The, should they be purple or pink? Because you're saying they don't have... But, yeah, they need to be bikeable. Whether it's separate facilities or shared road, they need to exactly. be bikeable. Yeah. yeah, so they should all, they should have all been... I mean, they already are pretty much all of those streets anyway, so... Now, what about fearing, though? Should fearing be both? Fearing is so thin. I mean, so narrow. And it's got all the on-street parking. And, but then it, it can be shared roadway. You just have right. to get traffic calm enough. But yeah, that should be bikeable. Um, and I guess, you know, very relevant to this is, you know, Lincoln and um, Sunset with all the parking stuff now, too. So remember, blue is biking. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but could you make the argument, though, by saying it's biking, that we're basically, we would preclude on-street parking because of the safety concerns, especially like on Fearing, where it's so narrow? I don't think, I think Fearing doesn't have, I mean, parts of Fearing, not the non-UMass portions of Fearing don't have on-street on parking. Okay. Might, Just might. on the hill down southwest has, um, you know, some parking, you know, proper metered parking there. That's it's it. UMA, it's UMass meters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, and um, in the um, level of traffic stress, it might, it might just mean we can't achieve LTS two, you know, that it might be one of those places where we only get to LTS three. Although um, that. They, they now have these really wide, um, highly improved sidewalks there, which are much, are very wide and now very smooth and easy for, you know, certainly could share, share with cyclists. They're very wide sidewalks. So they did a really nice improvement on that hill. You must did. On the hill. Yeah. Yeah. I just thinking like, you know, sunset through into town. Yeah. There, it's fairly narrow, but yeah. And there are parking, you know, that's parking. Right, I'm just... Um, but I think all that should be, it should be purple because it pretty much already is both. I mean, there definitely are sidewalks in throughout are, the yeah. entire area. Um, on one side of the street, I mean, they're fairly narrow, they're normal, you know, narrow side. On, on right. Sunset and, and actually, yeah, on Sunset. Uh, and yeah, on Fearing. And Fearing, right. Yeah. And it's all one side, but... Yeah. So, I mean, effectively what what you're saying is that it's going to be good for inexperienced cyclists, at least assuming they're still allowed to be on that sidewalk because downtown cyclists are not allowed to be on the sidewalk. So if that is, is continued, then this will be good for inexperienced or uh, small or old cyclists, but uh, it won't be, you know, the ideal level for the really strong cyclist biking on the street. Uh -huh. But but we have roads such that we are not going to achieve, you know, our ideal level of service traffic stress on every street for bicycles. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so all of that, I mean, everything on, in that quadrant really should be. And that was, oh, so of course, I'm lo re looking back at this, and now I'm, I'm remembering the part that we went through last time, which is um, just to the right of that off of, um, uh, tri is it Triangle? That blue on both ends of Triangle should really be, mm -hmm. uh, all oh, that purple. should be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have that roundabout either. <laughs> really. um, Okay, great. And then um, we should also discuss, I guess it also makes sense that Amity all the way down to um, university um, certainly should, um, it certainly has sidewalks on both sides. I, I'm not sure, you know, that, that hill for me as a cyclist and I'm a fearless cyclist also often makes, um, it's, it's a little, it's, you know, that's 
a little dangerous. I feel like that hill because of the speed of traffic and the lack of, um, yes. On, on Amity. Yeah. On Amity down the hill. Yeah. Yes, Eve. Oh, she's oh, leaving. Eve's gone. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Who's she's keeping gone. track of this? Is someone making notes about what we're saying? Yes, Guilford, Guilford is. is. Making notes. Okay. Yeah. I have a question, uh, it, oh, have on, a question which is the north end of University Drive, where it meets Massachusetts Avenue. It looks like there's kind of a squiggle that goes off um, to the yeah. right. That's the that? bikeway. That's the bikeway. Yeah, that's yeah. That's the bikeway goes. Okay. And nobody. That, I, I mean, I, I rarely. That should be. That, that should, should be purple blue. because that I can be, be used yeah. pedestrians okay. and bikers. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, thanks for pointing well, that out, Chris. You know what we're talking about, Guilford, right? Yes. Um, yeah, it's interesting that the Norwalk Track Trail isn't on the map. Shouldn't it be on the map? Well, we were talking about this earlier. That it, is it? I'm I mean, at least as a marker, like it doesn't have to yeah. be that. Am, you it's know, there. Amherst controls it, but just to acknowledge. Oh, that's it. it. That purple. That's purple. Yeah, it's purple. Uh, yeah. That unmarked, you know, non-street well purple. But yeah. then, what was the part that um, Bruce was just talking about? The northern. No, no, well, no, up, was, up at the campus. The bikeway. You know how oh. when the, the bike bikeway would it where it goes up past uh, Southwest. Oh, uh, okay, got it. Yeah, there's that's, a little that little squiggle yeah. that should I be purple. That intersection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, great. So I think we uh, concurred that Amity and um, going west should continue to be purple. Um, the question is, so um, I'm curious about how um, the Blue Hills and um, Lincoln are both um, in blue, but like Dana isn't, for example. Um, well, uh, yeah, and I'm trying to understand Blue Hills. Yeah, as an actual like, I don't. route. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't understand that either. <laughs> is that where you live on that? Is that your street? I do live on Blue Hills. But yeah. I mean, so Lincoln mm -hmm. has sidewalks and it's also part of the bike route that would go from Route 9 to campus. And so Blue Hills doesn't have I, any sidewalks. I guess right? I'm, I don't understand why Blue Hills is like considered that cut through or. Yeah, that's weird. Whatever. I don't. I don't. Could we just have that as a cycling route rather than a pedestrian route? It's a car cut through route. But well, yeah. I don't think we want that on the map. <laughs> but then why exclude? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little confused. Why, why not Dana too? Yeah. yeah, why not Dana too? So I'm, I'm just like, you well, know. And also well, if they are a cycling route, like does that mean you sign it and so on for cycling? Well, it just yeah, sounds. Like if you put it as a cycling route, do you have to have a cycle lane? But it's a road that you could cycle on fairly safely. It should be fairly slow, right? Yeah, and it doesn't your it doesn't also have speed bumps on it or not? They all do. Lincoln, Dana, and Blue Hills, they all have them. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, knocking at least down I don't know. I think Dana does. does. Yeah, I, I yes, they all do. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um uh so I'm not sure what our conclusion is from that other than what a question mark by Blue Hills. Any any idea on that, Guilford? Why it's just blue? Why why it is blue to begin with? Because it doesn't. Yeah. Why why Blue Hills and Lincoln are blue, but Dana isn't, for example. And Blue Hills has speed bumps on it, doesn't it? All of those. Yeah. All three. Of all those. three of them do. It wouldn't be a comfortable place to um, cycle, I don't think. And the lower end of Lincoln doesn't have speed bumps. Yeah, they all. It, it, it's only going, the only going, part, north, the going only north from Amity. No, Chris is right. There are no speed bumps yeah. on the Amity yeah. to yeah. Route yeah. 9 section. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But there is a sidewalk. So I'm. Confused. It should be purple. I mean, Lincoln should be. Yeah. Well, it's, so it's a little hard in town, too, because wouldn't you want all? I mean, I guess we want to identify priority routes, but. You would want decent sidewalks like on most of the downtown on most of the streets, streets. yeah right like mcclellan and like but all we've of already these, kind I of said say. this about like neighborhoods right we don't right. want that we're not having oh, okay. neighborhoods on sorry not having neighborhoods not having having sidewalks in neighborhoods i i mean i don't necessarily agree with that but that's kind of been the the point forward so should we force it in you know the blue hills like where would you put one 
Well, I guess, yeah, I guess yeah. I was thinking like McClellan or something, oh, like right. some okay, other yeah. like yeah. street that connects. Yeah. McClellan already has sidewalks. Yep. Right. Yeah, Lincoln should, we should reflect the fact that that's already there. Yeah. So, so Lincoln should, should be purple, right? I mean, yeah. they should be purple, I think. Sure. As yeah, well absolutely. as Northampton Road, right? Which right. And that's going to be where the project is. Right. But you, I, yeah, I don't think Blue Hill should be blue. Agreed. In, yeah. in terms of like the overall network, right? To Marcus's point, we're not just talking about neighborhoods, we're talking about the overall network and connectivity. Do you ever think that we should have two maps? One a biking map and one a pedestrian that, map? Yeah, yeah essentially. But, but then that gets to the level of service and like the safety yeah. and comfort for like the less experienced cyclist, right? So like children or... But you can have less experienced cyclists and stuff. I mean, if you had a cycling map and a pedestrian map, you can still have different levels of each mm -hmm. within yeah. each. Um, but I mean, it's nice to tie them all together, but then you just end up with like a million different colors, but... Yeah, I mean, there's really no purple on this map, you know, right? What do you mean? There's not a purple line on here. There's no. blue lines and red lines. Oh, right. I understand. Because they're together, they look purple. Right. Purple. And, right. Uh, oh, you didn't know that, Marcus. No. <laughs> <laughs> I learn something new every day. Oh, man. Good for you. It's like my daughter telling me that something yellow is green. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do think, I mean, Lincoln all the way down to Northampton Road and Northampton Road should be purple. I mean, red and blue. red and blue, Guilford. I understand purple. <laughs> well, so, I mean, I guess that's a question is, well, you could say purple on the key that it's both, right? Just to clarify for people because people won't, it doesn't say that in the key, does it? When I gave it to my, when I gave it to the person I got working on this, cleaning it up, he was like, well, what does purple mean? And I said, there is no purple. <laughs> oh yeah, because because the other <laughs> slightly confusing thing is that the, the, um, the, the center thing is also um, red. So perhaps that should be black. That, or, could, that like, could be a different color. Yeah. Sure. Like yeah. orange or purple, uh, no, not Something purple. else, yeah. Oh. Or green or something, <laughs> yeah. Well, we, green is, yeah, something else on this map, I think. People, people uh, will think Amherst has a beltway. Yeah. <laughs> May I ask a question of Guilford? What's the schedule on the Route 9 work? Do you know? It's out to bid, supposedly out to bid this month. So the whole war. It's going to start. No, they won't, they won't start until the fall. Okay. Oh. That's coming it. Yeah. Are they going to start at the Amherst end or start at Hadley? They're starting in Amherst. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know where they're going to start. Such a, it actually is a short project. Huh. So, and I mean, they're, they're tying. From, yeah, oh, sorry, go on. I mean, it only goes from University Drive to South Pleasant Street. So that's too I mean, much. It's, it's a real short project. It'll be the college is ripping up the athletic fields too, right? So they're trying to avoid messing with the traffic in and out of that. Well, well, I think I not uh, even thought of that. Well, Amherst College will probably be done before the major okay. this major work yeah. starts. And it will it'll look like like we're leading the whole Route Nine project too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the Hadley one is out to bid as well. Okay, cool. So everybody's going to go up through Sunderland now. <laughs> Yeah. Just as UMass comes back with all the students. That's I know, right? <laughs> Why not over the COVID time? When uh, Amherst know. College has been trying to get on the on the 91 um, signs for so long that maybe this is their opportunity. So, um, so um, let's proceed with, um, we have a few more minutes, so we can do a little bit more work here. Um, let's see, um, the Spring Street in, um, that also has a sidewalk on it, um, doesn't it? It does. Yes. So shouldn't that be um, purple? Pur Red and blue. Red and blue. And um, I don't know about 
Dickinson Street. And what are the ones? It has a bit of one. Oh. What are the one the is ones that, that are what is red it? only north of Main Street? That's the stuff up to yeah. Yeah, what are those? Leslie Street. Leslie Street goes up around the um, Amherst College dorms. Right. Yeah. No, I know that street. But why? Oh, why is it? Um, why is that one marked as pink, which is walking? Where sidewalk. There, like, for example, there isn't a sidewalk. Like there are plenty. There's a sidewalk. Oh. Right. But my 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 point is, why are those in particular mm -hmm. marked in red and not say, for example, McClellan? Yeah, I or would argue it, that we shouldn't have that Leslie Street. Mark. Yeah. Because the intersections. Are, well, and then also, so, right, the top well, intersection is very dangerous for pedestrians. It has a crosswalk right, right. at the curve, and there's it's all blind spots. And it might be a shortcut, though. Um, instead of, you don't have pedestrians going down that steep section of triangle towards Maine. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all blue. So it looks like somebody made a decision to use Leslie Street as the pedestrian route. But I, I agree with um, um, your uh, Tracy's comment that that is like that if, if you are to cross, if you're trying to walk from there over to um, Triangle, it's on a very awkward part of the. Um, no it, it, it is, but it's nothing that couldn't get fixed with a couple well, of you know lights or something, right? But I would also argue that as part of like a larger network that the triangle should go red like all the way down to yeah. Main Street, yeah, yeah, particularly yeah. because yeah. not everybody who's walking on triangle wants to go like towards the other part of town. Like there yeah. are people who are, are going to want to go towards West Amherst or to Main Street and the businesses along there. I want to get the hot tub time. Pizza. Ah, yeah, everything. Pizza. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. funny to have Leslie Street and also the cemetery. That's what I was trying to understand. Crazy. The cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what it, I don't understand that. I think well, that isn't that actually like an official walking trail though. I was over there the other day and I. So it could be through. The... But it, again, it shouldn't be on our network no. map per se. No. <laughs> Should I... it? I think I think Leslie Street is fine for the network. I think I agree that the uh, intersection needs work, but it is a you know if you're trying to come from say the high school or something into town, it's a network. It's your most direct route. True. It, it has everything in there. Oh. The the I have no idea yet. Yeah, that I mean, again, you could say the same for the the one part of the route within the cemetery certainly could be considered a a major cut through, but do we want to promote that when you could really just use Prey Street instead? Well, it's also only open, right? It's not open. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's, I think we get rid of the yeah. the graveyard because you know we're trying to be cognizant of what its use or intended uses. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I guess with Leslie, if we do have Leslie on the map, it should go all the way down to Main Street. But like it, it stops at like yes the at the park at that park right yeah, it should go both and then I do think too that it should be red that section of the triangle that's only blue because that is still a walking no that whole well. the whole bit of triangle exactly actually all of triangle right yes. all the way from right. the main intersection yeah right yep I, and with that's something we I think we decided the last time at our last meeting. Um, and so what did we decide of Dickinson Street and Spring Street? Spring Street should be purple as well. That's a major intersection through town um, and it already has sidewalks, um, but I don't know about. The Dickinson does have a sidewalk now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Amherst College put one in. So I, I think it should be purple because people yeah, it do can, use it to yeah. go down to the Amherst College campus. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, and how and then North Whitney because it like connects up to the middle school, right? Is that the idea? High Street. Well, isn't it? Isn't that North Whitney that? The blue the, is North Whitney. High Street yeah. goes to the middle school. North Whitney goes to uh, Strong Street. Oh right. Okay. Well, again, that's another corridor. Well, it is on this. I mean, which which? Yeah, I mean, should should there be a corridor path on High Street? I guess High Street. 
because it does con connect with the middle school. Well, and those there I mean, is a, there is a footpath on High Street already. Yeah, <laughs> all the way to the schools. Yeah, there is, yeah. And yeah. then even Chestnut, right? When you want it, maybe to go like Chestnut, it, it, that's a corridor too, right? From yeah. East Pleasant need, Street, yeah. that whole that yeah. whole thing in between uh -huh. East Pleasant and Main Street. It yeah. does seem like, I mean, and it, and it does connect all the schools and mm -hmm. absolutely it really seems like, and and for the most part, all of that has sidewalk already, um, and it's wide enough you know, for, for bikes as well. So. so we would make it all red and blue. Yeah. Pink or purple. Yeah. Um, what about, um, yeah. So North Whitney as well, right. It doesn't make sense that it stops. And that certainly is yeah. the, um, and I think we, we talked about this actually at our last meeting, um, this part of the map. So all the way mm -hmm. from, um, Redgate down to, um, to that purple at the at the bottom of our what Main is street. that yeah yeah because there is an existing footpath on the street right yeah mm -hmm. yes. it. um okay yeah and we did we did the rest of this in our last meeting so we can go further um if we could yeah. go further south what well about, um we're about we're about out of time actually oh sorry okay. um but if we could just take a look um sorry Guilford, yeah, thank you. I'm just, I'm just curious where we are now. Okay, so that's College Street and oh, and Northampton Road that we already discussed. That's going to be purple. And um, then Snell Street, right, would be purple too. Well, I don't Snell know. Street. Well, so there is, there's no, that really yeah, narrow Snell part. Street. Yeah, Snell Street scares me a little bit. And, and then there's also because the that. there's the new little well, the mini roundabout. Where? Where the mini roundabout that's going in at the corn that the intersection of South University oh, Drive yeah, yeah, and yeah. Snell. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh, 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 right, yeah. And I guess well, all of that connects. again. That Swift's way is that what the why the split between the red and the blue there is that because it's Swift's way and then it connects right. Yep. Yeah. Um, at I that mean, point. Yeah. There will be a pathway, though, along the extension of University Drive South. It's not there now, but in front of okay. um, in front of Barry Roberts' new development there, there will be a sidewalk. So, oh, good. Great. So for Snell, do we really need to have a sidewalk there? I mean, make purple between the, the Nowatuck Trail and South Pleasant, because you can get on the Nowatuck you know, right at the bridge there and go on the, the rail trail right, up to 116. So do we need to force you know, um, stuff through there? I, I'm just curious. I mean, this is kind of a, just an interesting thing, right? I think Snell yeah. is too narrow to have a sidewalk. It is, yeah, yeah. Well, it is currently, but it could be on our map, right? I mean, this is our is who, aspiration. Yeah. Who, who owns the woodland? Is it Amherst College? Amherst College. So maybe if you put the um, the DPW there, oh. we'll get it for free. So, so Marcus, <laughs> you would make that blue section like red and blue, both? Um, what you're proposing? No, I think we get rid of that blue section because well, yeah, we don't need it. Yeah. I was thinking about that too, except for, I guess, my one concern would be that the Norwatok Trail isn't fully accessible in the winter, for example. Yeah, no, and I, 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 well, that, I mean, it currently isn't, right? I, so that it would be, there is potential for, um, let's say, heavy equipment in quotes to go up and down that route in that particular area as a loop to make it accessible. Because you can just come off the bridge at 116, go down it, and then go down the swift way i'm just i'm right. just wondering like in terms of all season access and as the amount yeah. of development at the corner of university drive and route nine increases yeah. Yeah, yeah. that in terms of year-round accessibility that it might be good as kim was suggesting even though the road is too narrow at this point to have that as a red and blue route just because yeah. Because I also think of the trail as yeah. I mean, but then like, you run into the, the it's issue. more recreational than yeah. 
it, it is recreational, but you can we could make it. I mean, there is a potential for a loop there, right? There's easy access for a bobcat or whatever to get down there and clean the route. The issue that could potentially be cheaper than widening the bridge at Snell, the you know the, the trail bridge, so that you could safely have pedestrian and um, bike access under the bridge in the roadway, which is what you would be suggesting by making that stretch of roadway, you know, um, purple or red and blue. You're never going to that bridge. That bridge is just like way too narrow for anything. I mean, it's too narrow for traffic right. now. So if we make the section of snow between that and 116 red and blue, we push the need to widen that, or we just say, put the snow clearing stuff down the trail and take it off and make it go a swift way and we're done, right? So, well, I guess I guess one question is long term. Can that Snell Bridge continue to be there? Like, isn't there going to yeah. be like increasing transportation Traffic. pressure to yeah. widen it? And so, I so no, can we say priority. earlier? I'd like to say it as part of our aspirational transportation yeah. network, even if it's not currently. And I think I think having it in there. Um, I mean, I think the things that you're saying, uh, are, are, Marcus, are are simply like, you know. It could be an alternative if we say yeah. here's our aspirations is to make okay. this purple you know then then the planners or whoever can say well this is the aspiration it's not really possible because of that bridge we can you know use yeah, the yeah. section of the rail trail instead um would someone like to make a suggestion about finishing up this meeting because uh I move to end this meeting. <laughs> I think you have to use the word adjourn. No, I'll adjourn this meeting, sorry. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like we did some good work tonight, guys. Yes. Thank you, Kim. And thank and you, thank Kim, you. for taking the helm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thanks, Gil, for taking the notes. Thank you, Gil. Right, thank you. Good night. Bye. Right. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Have a good night.